In this video, we're going to go over the generic browser and how to use it to place assets within your level. Let's start off by opening up the generic browser, which I can do by clicking the Open the Generic Browser Window button located here in the toolbar. So we'll click that, and here is the generic browser, which is divided into a series of sections. Notice that it has its own menu bar. It has a small toolbar. It has a resource types list here on the left. It has a package list where you can uh, view all of your packages. So let's start off with the great big main window. And the purpose of this window is to show you the many types of assets located within a specific package. In this case, I have the LT Deco package loaded into the generic browser. You can see that I have it selected here. Also, I want to show you something. You'll notice that the LT Deco package is currently in black, while many of these other packages are listed in gray. That is because any gray package is not fully loaded into the browser. So you can see some of the assets, uh, specifically these are generally assets Assets that are going to be uh, referenced by the level in some way. So it's a way to save resources by only loading in those assets from a package that you're referencing without having to load in the entire package. If you wanted to then go in and reload, or I'm sorry, load in an entire package, you can right click on a package and you can choose fully load. And we'll give that a second. And now this package is fully into the editor and I have access to all of the assets within it. I can scroll up and down this list by clicking and dragging inside the gray uh, empty areas within the window. I have a scroll bar here on the uh, right hand side and I can use the mouse scroll wheel to move up and down. Right, generally I find using the gray area dragging method to be the most reliable as it gives a predictable speed when scrolling through all the assets. Very cool. Now, straight up from the uh, package list, we have the resource types list, and this is kind of a filter to allow you to control what types of resources you want to see at any given moment. For example, if I uncheck particle systems, and let's maybe scroll down, it looks like I have textures selected as well. Now that I have nothing selected, everything disappears. We have nothing inside the actual asset window, nothing in the packages window either. Let's go ahead and check materials. So now we see all of the packages that contain materials, and I'll uh, grab the LT base package, and within that we only see its materials now. We don't see any other type of asset. So it's a nice way to kind of narrow down what you can and can't see. If you want to be able to see everything, make sure that you have the show all resource types button checked, or the, the checkbox here. If for some reason you're looking for an asset that you know is somewhere in this browser and you just have no idea where, make sure that this is one of the first places you look. The second place you'll look is actually over here in the filter line, which uh, is in the toolbar. And even though uh, we haven't talked about the toolbar yet, I will jump over to it. The filter is a way that you can uh, selectively filter out results that you don't want to see. So for example, if I want to see maybe a glass material, I can type glass, and this narrows down to only those assets that have the word glass in the name. The only problem is sometimes you might forget that you have some text in here, so you could potentially close the browser and open it back up, and you'll notice that filter remains. So that can be really confusing. Make sure you do check that filter and keep it cleared out if you're not uh, using it at right, the moment. It can become confusing if you had typed in glass, and then you move on to a package that contains no assets that can include glass in the name, and you would suddenly wonder why there are no assets showing. Right, it'll look like the package is empty, when in reality it's not. Now let's take a look at the buttons found here inside the toolbar. Starting at the left, we have the list button. This allows us to control how we see our assets here in the generic browser. If I click on list, we no longer get those nice icons. Instead, we get a list of the object's name, the group that it's in, the size that it takes up, and some info about it. So for textures, we get our resolution. Uh, we can see that it's a DXT1 style texture and uh, where it's coming from exactly. We can switch this over to a preview, which gives us a list, and it gives us the uh, actual thumbnail. So if we click on any entry in the list, we get its uh, little thumbnail. Personally, I think I use thumbnails 99.9% .9 of the time. Right, you'll use thumbnails whenever you want to locate an asset from a pure visual standpoint. Right. If you have been working with a package for a long time and you begin to get a feel for the naming, then some of the list style views can become more useful. That's right. All right, so moving on from here, we have the group by class button. And while this is active, all objects of the same class will be bunched together, which I think was already the case in this particular package, but it'll keep all textures in one uh, group and all materials together and all static meshes together, that sort of thing. Right. If you had a case where the naming was such that you had, uh, in all of these cases, the names are set up so you have uh, prefixes, where M is prefixing all materials and T is pre prefixing all textures. That's why we're getting that kind of auto-grouping effect. If a package didn't follow that naming structure, but you wanted things to be grouped by type, you could activate this button and then have everything 
sorted. All right, so moving on from here, we have the in use only uh, button. If we switch this on, we get a list of only those assets that are in use in our level. And if we select them, we get a window down here at the bottom which tells us how they are in use. So it's just a way to keep track of uh, what exactly you're using in the level. So moving on from here, let me go ahead and turn that off. We have the uh, particle system real-time thumbnails, which at the time of this recording isn't functioning uh, the way that it should be, so we don't get any real-time feedback with particle systems or any other asset inside of our browser. So let's just go ahead and move on from here. We can change the types of primitives that we see on materials. So by default, this is set to sphere, and you can indeed see that all of these uh, materials are using a sphere primitive to show us what they look like. We can switch this over to a cube primitive, and everybody changes over. Switch them over to cylinders as well, or over to planes if you just want to see like a color swatch effect. Let's go ahead and leave that over at the default sphere, however. We can search by name if we're looking for a particular uh, asset. Like in this case, maybe I'm looking for, I don't know, the uh, BSP recycle material. So let's try uh, recycle and I'll make sure that I uh, click containing as opposed to starting with. So I'll do containing, and there you go. So there's all of the assets that contain recycle in them. So uh, let's move on from here. We have the reload imported assets button. So re-import uh, resources in all selected packages. This is very useful if you have imported in some assets such as textures or models, and then you go into an external application such as Photoshop, and maybe you tweak that texture and you save the result, but you need to now re-import it, and you don't want to go texture by texture and do that. You can just select the package where that uh, texture has been, re has been imported in the first place and click the re-import button. It'll bring it back in and update those changes for you. Next to this, we have the thumbnail format, which allows us to set the size of our thumbnails. If we click on this drop-down, we can set uh, various resolution sizes. So here's 256 by 256, or uh, down to 64 by 64. We can also set percentages. So here's a 100%, here's 200%, and so on. And in some of those, if you have uh, scrolled down to the textures section below all these materials, in some of those cases, you can see now where you have the LT Base BSP. Some of those textures are actually smaller than others. This way, it gives you a, an easy preview to see which textures are larger than others. That's right. Because it's all percentage-based instead of a specific value. All right, so next to this, we have the uh, filter section, which I've already shown you how that works. You just type in the name or a word, some sort of filter to use to uh, selectively remove certain articles from the browser so that you only see what it is you're looking for. And really with that... That's all of the functionality of the generic browser, and you're going to use the generic browser. Let me go ahead and just kind of give you a quick demonstration. So if we wanted to, say, apply this material to a surface in our level, all we would need to do is select a BSP surface, click on that material, and we have applied it. If we wanted to maybe put a static mesh into our level, we can go into a package that has a static mesh, and, that, and uh, currently that would be the LT Deco package. And let's just scroll down. In fact, what I'll do is I'll switch off materials, and let's switch on static meshes. So I'm just narrowing it down just to those. I need to reselect my package now. Right, so because we had selected something that caused all packages to be deselected. So here we go with uh, LT Deco SM Container 01, which is a crate, and you can't get enough crates in a game. So let's place one of these in the map. Now, I'm very limited on screen space, so please bear with me. But if I right-click here on the floor, we can go to Add Actor, and there's a, a static mesh. And now we've placed that into our map, so we can move that around and position it wherever we uh, need it to be. So uh, that's a quick look at placing objects into your map as they are found in the generic browser. One more thing, and I'll probably be mentioning this uh, again in a later video, but it is such a wildly useful feature that I thought I'd give it specific mention here, and that is the ability to right-click on an object and choose Sync Generic Browser with uh, any actor that or asset that is in your level, and it will open up the generic browser, navigate you to the package and group where that uh, asset can be found and select it for right. you. Like in this case, since we had just opened up the LT Deco package and worked in it, we haven't really messed around with any of the floors. So if we had wanted to locate exactly where in the generic browser this floor mesh could be found, we could grab any one of these meshes and right then click. tell it to sync to browser, sync generic browser, and we can say, okay, it was in the LT floors package, and there it is selected. Exactly. So it's a real easy way to run around in a level, say, ooh, I like that static mesh, or I like this uh, particular asset. Where did that come from, and how can I find it? So you can just right-click and choose sync generic browser and jump right to it. And that is an overview of how to use the generic browser, and that will wrap up this video.